Hello, hello, hello. This is Tony Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, I've got a lot of people to thank. Rocky Lennon sent me a good one. I think it's from Arizona. And uh, I poached one from Team Skeptic. Link to his channel in the description below. Soft set walks in in front of Judge Crum out in Kansas. There's no way I'm not going to laugh at that. There's just no way. I have a late edition from uh, Marion. Some shenanigans over in, in DeSantos' courtroom. And what else do I have? Oh, I've got a good TPO. That's entirely Natalie's fault. I think she's doing a stream after mine. So let's get started, shall we? Good stuff. What is your phone name, please? Delivery cheese. This is the known name booking on our end, Your Honor. All right, hold on a second. I have to type. Th th this guy thinks he's getting away with something, and he's not. The, the audio isn't great, but it's kind of fun. It's, it's not very long. I got your name here. So, sir, what is your first name? Do it. What is your middle name? I have a middle name. And what is your last name? Oh, Are you a second, junior, third? No. And no, what is be. what is your date of birth? Um, October twenty fifth, two thousand three. How old are you? Uh, like nineteen. Um, looks like you're charged, sir, with let's see, a criminal trespass charge and refusing to provide your true name charge. I do not have a probable cause statement, so I have to release you from custody. Look at that smile. Look at that smile. She says, I don't have a probable cause statement, so I have to release you from custody, in case you didn't hear it. Okay. Hold on. You're going to have to make it to court in South Tucson on... September 12th at 10 a.m. Make sure you appear as not a warrantful issue. I think she just said South Tucson. I don't. I didn't know where it was, but th there you go. For your, for, for my Arizona folks. Thank you for your arrest, and don't go back to the incident location. You are excused. Thank you. Thank you. What is your full name, please? Oh, uh, you are You're charged with you're charged with criminal trespass and drug paraphernalia. I'm an inner please of not guilty. You also had one, two, three, four, five, six, five cases in warrant status at a city court for charges involving. Oh, wah, wah, wah. Next day they pick up that he's got five cases in warrant status. Criminal trespass, criminal damage, false reporting, drug paraphernalia possession, refusing to provide your true name charges. I am going to quash those warrants. Set your bond at $1,000. Appoint an attorney to represent you from the City Public Defender's Office. Your next court date is City Court, September 1st at 1.45 p.m. Your attorney will be in touch with you. I have a question. Yep. What was the possible cost for them um, on minute period of them? I'm sorry? What was the problem? What was the problem with us? You're charged. I don't know. You'll have to talk to your attorney about your case. Okay. Good afternoon. Your name, sir? Uh, David Walker. Yeah, it looks like he has two files. I see that. Yeah. All right. We'll next take up two cases, both entitled State of Kansas versus David Wayne Walker, 22 CR 398 and 22 CR 508. All right. We'll first take up 22 CR 508. This is my case. Mr. Walker, you failed to appear in front of me on July 17th. For your preliminary hearing control docket, where were you that day? It's safe for sure, sir. 
Okay. Well, I issued a bench warrant bond forfeiture. Have you ever had a failure to appear? Possibly. And set a new bond in the amount of $10,000 cash or surety? Are you still representing yourself? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Do you want to continue representing yourself? Well, hell yes. It's working out awesome. Look at me. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at the table. Uh, yes, sir. Don't have any money to. Pardon? Yes, I guess I represent myself. Okay. You understand that if you can't afford to hire an attorney, one would be appointed for you. I, I don't know what he would do for me. Okay. Well, he could provide you legal advice and perhaps advance any defenses you may have had, but if you want to represent yourself, you have that right. I just want to make sure you understand that if you can't afford an attorney and would like to have one represented you, I would appoint one for you. Do you understand that? Thank you, sir. And you, you wish to continue representing yourself? Uh, yes, sir. The docket notes don't reflect if a waiver of counsel was ever <clears throat> signed. Do you have any notes that would reflect that he's waived counsel on the record or otherwise, Ms. Norris? Your Honor, I just note that on December 30th of 2022, a uh, defendant stated that he would hire his own counsel, and then he had a failure to appear, and uh, we... And on May 5th, we did not appoint any counsel. Um, I don't show an actual waiver. And the notes don't reflect that he did a waiver on the record. It just says that he would hire his own attorney. Okay. Well, Mr. Walker, you've indicated here on the record that you wish to waive your right to an attorney and represent yourself. So I'm going to have you, if the jail has one, sign a waiver of counsel. Do you have a form? Uh, I believe so. All right. Can you read through that? Make sure you understand it. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me. Pr probably not, but we're going to pretend you can. There's, there's yeah. no, there is no uh, um, defendant in the, I'm, I'm the defendant in the case. Am I the defendant in the case? There's no, uh, there's no, victim. There's no victim to my crime, correct? The crime that I'm... Well, you're incarcerated, so yes, you're the defendant, and there's no requirement for a victim. Any more questions? Tuesday, there is no victim in the crime. The state of Kansas, you have drug charges, possession of methamphetamine, possession of paraphernalia, and driving while suspended are your three charges. Yeah, but no yeah. victim, correct? No victim in the crime? No victim? I, I'm not I'm not sure I understand your question and what that has to do with your waiver of counsel. Well, I'm the, I'm the defendant. There must be someone making a claim. The state, I, of, the state of Kansas is making the charges against you, Mr. Walker. Let's go to time. The, the state of Kansas is the victim. The state of Kansas charged you with these crimes. Do you wish to represent yourself, or do you wish to have an attorney representing you? Um, I will re represent myself. And you've got a uh, waiver of counsel in front of you, correct? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Why, 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 why do I need to sign? Why do I need to sign it? Why do I need to sign this? Because I like to have it documented in the file that you understand that you have a right to have an attorney representing you, and that if you can't afford to hire one, one would be appointed for you, um, and you understand that, and knowing those rights, you wish to represent yourself. That just documents that for the court file. What I don't understand is yeah. why there are, why there is a uh, 
charges against me when uh, when I, when there is no victim. All right, Mr. Walker, I, I, I'm not going to play this game this afternoon. I'm going to set this case I would play in, case in front of me on I'm really October. I understand. Mr. Walker, your case is being set on October 10th at 2.30 in front of myself, and that will be done by Zoom. That's the felony preliminary hearing control docket. October 10th at 2.30. Uh, you're you got a $10,000 cash or surety bond on that case. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if I would be, uh, if I wouldn't be able to have access to um, certain legal things to, 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 uh, to, you know, judge certain legal things. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm doing a good job representing myself, aren't I? to be able to put my case up. I believe you've got a law, law library there at the jail. I'm well, not they, sure what, they, what kind of access they provide to you, but you can consult with somebody there at the jail. Okay. All right. I'm now going to take up 22 CR 398. This is Judge Webster's case. Looks like he failed to appear in front of her on July 31st. <laughs> she set a new bond for $6,000 cash or surety. You've already had a first appearance, so I'm going to set this in front of Judge Webster on October 30th at 9 o'clock in the morning. That will be by Zoom, October 30th at 9 o'clock in the morning. We love Kansas. So, again, your bond is 6000 cash or surety. Anything else on this case, Ms. Norris? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Your Honor, was the uh, the time for court on October 10th for 22 CR 508, was that 2.30? That's correct. Just, just clarifying. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. We'll be in recess. Mr. Walker, you are excused. Thank you. I know where there's free lodging. The table's right in front of you. This is case 23-262, and does uh, Mr. Messner's petition. I'm sorry, Your Honor, what? I said this is Mr. Messner's petition for an anti-harassment order? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> How did Biggin get dragged into a Washington court? That's that's my question. A minute here while I open up the file. Go. All right, and Ms. Uh, Davidson, you, it, I have a note here that you were, in fact, served with notice of the hearing and a copy of the petition. Yes, I go. was. So you're ready to go? Yes, and then okay. I um, also submitted a <clears throat> anti-harassment order. You did, me. last week. And um, that was Wednesday, I think it was, and then when I talked to the court clerk, she said they might not be able to get it delivered over the weekend because the guy delivered them had the next two days off or yeah, something. Yeah, that, that can happen. And so she said she didn't know if it would get you know served in time yeah. for today. And, and I don't think it did. Uh, yes, sir, it did. I did it? You it got it? Yes, okay. okay. So I you got it not. over the weekend? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there, there had been a... Uh, I think it was after you were in court, was it two weeks ago that you were here? Yes, sir. Uh, and we extended this, um, and I think what happened is after Ms. Davidson got served, she came into court and she filed her own petition. And since I saw that uh, that had been filed and this was already on the calendar to just have both matters put on the same Thank calendar, you. I didn't know if you'd get notice or not uh, because of the time frame, but apparently you did. So yes, right. since everybody is here and we know exactly what everybody is alleging, we can just hear both of these things at the same time and make a decision. Okay. All right. So that I think saves saves both of you 
having to come back in another two weeks and hear the same things Thank again. You. It's just more efficient that way. Thank you. Okay. So uh, just a second here. Like I said, I was opening my electronic file in this case. In my opinion, the judge does a fantastic job in this hearing. There we go. Okay, so we'll get started here. Um, this will go a little bit different than what you heard in the last case. Is Mr. Mester, I'm going to let you go first. You know, as the original petitioner, and then after that, Ms. Davidson, I'll hear from you. But you can also then bring up the allegations in your petition, and then I'll give Mr. Messner an opportunity to respond to that. Okay, so raise your right hands, please, and do you both swear the testimony you give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, Mr. Messner, go ahead. Okay, um, the reason that I filed it uh, was because. Ms. Davidson had come into my office to talk about the four-sided inspection that I did about two months ago now. Um, I've been in place as the manager officially just over a month and a half going on my second full month. And part of my job was to do an inspection and she wanted to talk about it because she didn't understand or couldn't see what was on it. Um, I told her, okay, I would get the original copy so we could look at it. I had a body camera that my management company requires me to wear when I'm out on the property. I reached over and turned it on and when I did, she, for lack of a better term, snapped and went ballistic. Uh, threw stuff at me, cleared off my desk. Karen mode activated. Grabbed the camera, which she later, later told the police after I called 911 that she did not grab the camera. Uh, came around the end of my desk and ran into my side and started reaching down trying to pick up papers on the floor. I had pushed back against her and told her she couldn't do that. She needed to get out of my office. That was other tenants' private paperwork, and she was not allowed to look at it. Um, we exchanged a few words as she went out, and I grabbed the phone and called 911 and made a report. Uh, basically, I just want to be able to do my job as the manager. I been in place, like I said, a month and a half going on two months. I can't fix multiple years of neglect and bad management prior to me in a short amount of time. And her allegations to other tenants is that I'm harassing her. I have not written her any violations. As a matter of fact, she has got the best looking lot in our park. Uh, the only thing that I had originally written was there was a question about the gazebo that she put on her deck, and we just needed to talk about that. And at one point, I had advised her to call 811. She was going to plant some stuff in her yard, and I had told her that that's the best way to do it. They've got all the accurate documents, and if you're going to dig, you've got to call them anyway. It's a, it's a law. Um, Mine would be a guess to what paperwork I had because I didn't have a lot of paperwork other than showing where the septic was on our property. I couldn't, I couldn't find electrical or anything like that. It would be a guess on my part, and that puts the property management company I work for at risk. If we guess and she hits something, that's why it's just better to call 811. And, and again, oh, Mr. Messner, didn't you tell me, uh, remind me, uh, the, besides the incident you just described in your office, that there was another incident? There, there was a time she came down my driveway um, demanding to talk to me. I had just got back from one of my runs moving up from Oregon. And she had made some accusations, and, and she made the threat. She goes, remember, I have a gun, and I know how to use it. And other tenants have told me that she told them the same thing. Do you remember the approximate? Well, that's up a notch from I want to talk to your manager, I have to say. Date of that? It would have been the last week in July. Okay. Um, I had multiple tenants write statements that she had told them that she was going to do bodily harm to me. One lady left me a voice message but said that she would deny it if I played it because she's afraid of what Miss Davidson would do to her if she found out. And I submitted two more statements this morning with the, the um, clerks up front when I came in, letters that had come in. Your basic Karen reign of terror. Uh, I, I just 
I just basically want to be able to do my job as a manager. And I can do that with no contact with her. She can put her rent in the slot in the office. If I have paperwork, I can hang it on her door without involvement and state required. The RCW requires that I mail it as well. And if I recall, you also live on the property. Right? Yes, sir, I do. Yeah, but it not uh, not like this isn't like an apartment situation. No, no, it's there. a mobile home park. All right. Anything else, Mr. Messner? Um, not at the moment. Just for when I respond to. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So, Ms. Davidson, you can uh, absolutely respond to to those allegations uh, as you see appropriate, and then. After you've done that, you can then explain to me the basis that you're asking for an order as well. Okay. Your Honor, I've lived at the Whispering Woods trailer park for um, about 15, 16 months. Mm -hmm. um, since the day that I moved in there, the management has not been, you can't work with them. We've got an upper management, Mr. Griffin, that I thought might show up today. Um, because I've called him numerous times to find out what Whispering Woods is perfect, by the way. It's, it's just the perfect name for this scenario. What my rights and my <laughs> what my rights are and what they're not. Um, as far as Mr. Mesner goes, I don't have a beef with him. I told him when he approached me one Sunday and came across the road to my home, and I was walking away from him with my hose because I knew what was going to happen. We've had four managers. How many times have I said that? In a year. And none of them will work with the clients, the tenants, including Mr. Mesner. He was going to turn the whole trailer park around in about two days. And I said, not when your nuts are tied to management. Sorry, but they are. <laughs> Mr. Griffin is an older gentleman that will not work with anyone. Sorry for that blatant reference to your nuts in open court. When I came to that park, I came to get away. This has nothing to do with it, but I want you to know why I'm at that trailer park. My son-in-law put a gun to my head twice in three months. And I had to get out of the harbor. I lost my husband. And that's a whole other story. I came because it was point. secured. It was out in the country. It was quiet. And I thought. Record, ma'am. Do you know? Okay, thank you. I just lost my husband after 47 years. When I, from the minute I got into that trailer park, I got nothing but harassed with notes on my doors, my doorknobs, on my car, on my windshield, um, and it was over just stupid stuff. And I sold real estate long enough to know that I've sold in parks for many, well, you know, like threatening people with guns and whatnot. Many, many years. And upper management cannot grandfather some of us in and not grandfather the rest of us in, too. And that's all I've come up with. J.D. Mesner and I became instant friends that Sunday morning that he came over to my home. Instant friends. He told me how sincere he was about making our part great. I did not bodily threaten him with a gun or anything else. Not one time. And I did not tell the neighbors that I would take a gun to him or anything else. My children stole all my guns. They're gone. I don't have a gun to my name. Yes, I thought about getting... Ah, the, the classic, my children stole my guns defense. Well played. Protection. The only thing I have is pepper spray. It's in my purse right now. But there is no, the tenants have no right in this park, Your Honor. None. Every time you go to send paperwork in, it has to go through JD, which is fine. I have no problem with that. But... As far as the 811, and he tells me that, oh, get it marked, have them come and mark it. I'm in number one. I'm first in and first out. I have the main septic system on my property. I have the main power on my property. They come, PSE 
and them come in on my property anytime they think they can. They move things around. They don't put things back. I get no notice of when they're coming. They've been there at 7.30 in the morning. They've been there at 8 o'clock at night. I, have, I pay my rent. I am a good tenant, and I pay my rent. I didn't want anything to happen with me and Mr. Mesner, but when I make an appointment to go over to his office, and I pull in there, and he's got the doors wide open, all propped up, I should have known not to go in there. But I thought we had a better understanding than that. But apparently we didn't because Mr. Mesner was going to take care of everything in that park and he was going to be the best park manager there ever was. And next thing I know, we're going out to dinner that night, Your Honor. That's how well we hit it off. And then we tried to have consensual. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I haven't seen this part. <laughs> this is getting awkward. Sex, but that didn't work over his apartment oh, because, oh. well, never oh. mind. He couldn't perform. But anyway, that's not a. That's nothing that. for you to know or whatever, but Wait, no, I not to go in there. But Sorry. I thought we had a better understanding. Natalie, you got to warn me about these things. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't know she was going to play that card. Let's 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 hear it again without without me uh, ruining it. Ending than that. But apparently we didn't because Mr. Mesner was going to take care of everything in that park and he was going to be the best park manager there ever was. And next thing I know, we're going out to dinner that night, Your Honor. That's how well we hit it off. And then we tried to have consensual sex, but that didn't work over his apartment because, well, never mind. He couldn't perform. But anyway, that's not a, that's nothing for you to know or whatever. But I will say that I really liked him and I want to apologize to you personally. I I guess we don't have a harassment order yet. I guess I, I wanted to apologize to you today after listening to this gentleman, this fine gentleman. Sweet Jesus! What? <laughs> Court officer I I've ever been in front of that's fair. <laughs> And after listening to all these people in here today, J.D., I don't want it. I just want you and I to get along and work together. But your nuts are tied for management, so that makes me want to put my home up for sale and get out of the park, J.D. I've never caused problem to anybody there, no one, including you. You're the one that said, that said I threw all your paperwork. I put my hand on your desk right here to hold myself up. And then I did push your paperwork off onto you because your head was in my freaking chest. <laughs> and it was not. Yes, it was. Now, and Ms. I did not touch you. Now, Ms. Davidson, look, obviously this is getting you worked up. This is so much worse, and by so much worse, I mean so much better than I thought it was. But let's take a breath. I'm here. sorry. Let's I'm just, sorry. Everybody, take a breath. I and just want things to work out. I'm the same way as that lady on the machine. You know, meth homes and this and that. The drug, the park is infested with drugs. There's sixty of us that live in there. <laughs> now, just hold on a minute. I will not have you tarnishing the reputation of this fine trailer park. And I get picked on over some freaking piece of garbage or some piece of fencing that's out in my yard laying around doing nothing. The lady that wrote me up, all I did was take pictures for evidence, Your Honor. I never went on their property. I never went anywhere. I wanted it in case we had to go to court because I knew this was coming. The tenants have no rights. And J.D.'s hands are tied. He's never going to get anywhere with management. That's not always I time, tried when I, I first moved in there, sir, and it didn't work. <laughs> and I will move to get out of there and leave your life. If, if I'm so, that much of a miserable person to you. Yeah, Ms. Da Ms. Davidson, kind of <laughs> focus up here and make your, make your comments to okay. me. All right. I won't say another word. <clears throat> no, it sounds to me like you don't really want an order against Mr. Mesner. This judge uh, deserves an award for keeping a straight face through that. I don't. Okay. And I don't think I deserve one against me either. 
We have to live 50 feet across from each other. Yesterday when he was outside, I had to look at the road instead of looking at my nice yard I've worked so hard on because he's over there spraying bees with bee spray, telling all the neighbors. And I have heart failure and I have asthma. And all I can do is smell that stuff, even check with anybody that has health problems in the place before he told anybody who went and sprayed it. Mr. Messner, I don't, I don't think you need to, <clears throat> I don't think you need to respond because it sounds to me like Miss Davidson doesn't, doesn't want that order she applied for. So we won't, we won't go any further down that road, and I'll just Absolutely. allow her to withdraw that. Okay, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, you know, I'm sorry that there's this much conflict between you. I, I guess I'm getting the picture that there's quite a lot more going on in terms of the. The, the property and that it doesn't all really have anything to do with ridiculous you personally, but it I mean it obviously is it's affecting the quality of the quality of life in the in the whispering woods. All right, the question really you know this comes down to whether Mr. Okay, he dropped the whispering woods in there. I don't again. I don't know how he did it with the straight face. Messner's proved to me by a preponderance of the evidence that there's been this course of conduct done by you, Miss Davidson. And what he tells me and what he testified to is about two different incidents that happened. Um, you referenced the one with the one that happened at his desk. Um, and I think you agree that you pushed some stuff onto him. And uh, uh, there's, there's no pill that'll fix this scenario, I assure you. You're I pushed it onto the floor, Your Honor. I didn't push it on him. I What I did is I thought if I could get away so from him while he's heading towards me, I'd turn around and get in my rig and go. And he said, I'm calling the cops. He said, please, I'll wait in my driveway. And I did. And then another incident that, that Mr. Messner describes has to do with a threat. Um, and What did I do? Now, now Ms. Davidson, hold on. This is, this is where I... Announce my decision. This is not where we argue. This is not where we fight with each other. Okay, that's not that's not allowed. Now here's the thing: an order can be issued to, if I find by a preponderance of the evidence that there's been this course of conduct, and I'm I'm concerned that there's a lack of proof. I don't think I can find by a preponderance of the evidence based on your testimony, based on Ms. Davidson's response about the issue of this threat. Uh, the, the, not the first incident, but the second incident that, that you said tor was toward the end of July. The evidence is not strong enough on that. And without that, there isn't a course of conduct. And without that, there isn't a basis to issue an order. So I understand what you're telling me. Uh, I'm just telling you that I'm not satisfied with the strength of the evidence on that. So I, unfortunately, what that means is I'm going to have to deny the petition as well. So, Ms. Davidson, what that means is that I'm not going to issue an order against you as Mr. Messner requested. Uh, and I explain the reasons for that is the lack of proof. I'm not saying there hasn't been at least one incident, though. And I'm not saying that this resolves things between you. Um, I'm confident, though, that going away from here, there's not going to be further problems. If there are further problems, you know where the courthouse is, and, and you can come back. Your Honor, I'm gonna, excuse me. I'm going to hope that there aren't any. In our little fracas, or whatever you want to call Mr. Messers in, in the office, words. Yes. I've lost a $7,000 bridge that I'm what? heading to the uh, dentist as soon as oh, I get done here. dental bridge? Yes, and it's, it, was, it fell out in his office. And him and the three officers that responded all denied finding it. And I know that my bridge is in there. And that's going to be next. I'm going to bring, I will bring charges up against that because I need the money from our bridge. Yeah. The, I just, I. Uh, you're not a prosecutor. You're not bringing charges. I know it's the, <laughs> the least of the worries here. But I have, I have serious questions as to how she lost a bridge in his office. I, I do. <laughs> I can't resolve your, your okay. issue there. It's all right. I'll do it.
Yeah. Yeah. I. <laughs> I. I. I really even hate to say this, but I think there was more going on in that office than than anyone's testified to or wants to. Okay. Uh, the, clerk, the clerk will make copies of this for you. Okay. And I'm going to suggest that you kind of go ahead here one at a time and not, not at the same time. Just I will keep, not keep understand. Things, keep keep the, the temperature down, so to speak. Oh, you you hooked me up this time, Natalie. You did. I, I didn't know about the best part of it. There's still a moment. I saw the very end. Okay. And then, Ms. Davidson, your petition is uh, withdrawn at your request and dismissed. Thank you. Wait for it. We've got we've got another touch of awkward coming coming down the pike here. And yeah, why don't you come up first, get your papers, and then just head on out. Oh, that's on out. Oh, thank you. Thank you, George. You're welcome. Can I have a handshake? That, that, that's okay, no, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the sentiment, but I appreciate do you. That. I appreciate you being so honest. Thank and you, ma'am. Straightforward. I'm sorry. I just I He's like, yeah, I don't want to touch that hand. That's yeah, it's okay. Honored <laughs> to be in front of you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Messner. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. All right. Um, I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Friend of Austin, 2-3-8-2-0. Okay, I haven't seen this either. Marion sent it to me. I'm sure it's good, just based on the fact that it happened in DeSanto's room, and she's got nothing but crazy lately. Um, but I'm watching this with you the first time. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke, Marion, my time. We are ready to proceed. Good morning. All right, good morning. All right, ma'am, your name for the record, please. Fred Austin. All right, thank you. Today is the date scheduled for a pollution violation. Um, <clears throat> Your client is currently on probation for operating, I'm sorry, malicious destruction of property. She was sentenced to 27. 
It's under 771.1 at this point. She had a probation violation hearing August 14th, where she pled not guilty. We scheduled for today's date. And counsel, you indicated that a hearing is not going to be necessary. And so then the court um, excused Ms. Walker and Ms. Bingham. That's is that it. correct? Yes. Okay. All right. And so counsel, what is happening today? Your Honor, I've gone through my client's rights to have a hearing in which you can contest the technical violations. Uh, we had a dialogue regarding uh, the nature of her tests. It's my understanding that she's not going to contest the results. Uh, but we I'd like to see Christopher Shemke have, have a crazy client uh, competition with Darren Patterson. I really would. We do have an explanation. Yeah, please raise your right hand. He's on this for from the testimony box. Can this man be the truth? The whole truth is nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. And all right, yeah. and you understand that the you're the allegations for the alleged positive for alcohol July 17th, August 2nd, and August 15th, correct? I didn't know. I didn't know. The, I don't even know one. Council, did you get the um, updated one as yes, well? Yes, Your Honor. From... The original was. Uh, July 17th, and then I got one indicating uh, August 2nd. And August 15th. When I get and down yes, there. Yes, that's correct, August 15th. Okay. All right. And so, ma'am, those are the allegations. And um, as to those allegations, how do you plead? Not guilty. Uh, well, if you're going to plead not guilty, that means well, you're going to contest the results. But we had a dialogue regarding the nature of why it came back positive. So. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Okay, ma'am, only one can speak at a time because they're up the recording. Okay, so um, I don't call the dice for you, Yeah, I did. You were with the right hand? Yes. Okay. Translation, this is exactly what we just talked about, and I told you to say something else, <laughs> and you agreed, and now you're doing this. Okay. <laughs> Typically, this changes on my screen, so I was <laughs> Okay. And yeah, as to those allegations, how do you plead? Guilty. You've gone over your advice of rights for probation violation purposes with your attorney, correct? Correct. And you understand all of those rights? Yes. You also signed this document today explaining those rights? Yes. And you've already reviewed that document prior to signing it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you also understand by entering into a plea, you'll be, you We'll be waiving some of those rights, specifically some of your rights to a contested hearing. Yes. And you also understand the possible penalty as a result of your plea, correct? Yes. And specifically the recommendation, that's kind of a combined, a combined recommendation at this point where the recommendation is for you to continue and complete all terms of probation, have your under advisement status revoked, sit down probation violation fee, 10 days jail, 30 days on the alcohol tether, upon release from jail, and increased testing. And you understand that's a recommendation? Yes. And knowing all that, you still want to continue with your plea. Yes. Has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to enter into a plea? No. All right, counsel, if you can please applaud your your plan. Yes, I'd like to direct your attention back to July 17th of 2023. As term condition of your probation, you were ordered to test. Are you, you're not contesting that the test on the 17th indicated alcohol in your system, is that correct? Yes. And then furthermore, you were ordered to test on August 2nd and August 15th, and you're not contesting that the Go test up. results came back positive for alcohol. Is that accurate? Yes. Satisfied, Your Honor. The court is also satisfied with knowing voluntary is actually accurate. The court will accept your plea. The probation violations indicate technical violations one, two, and three. And counsel asked for the recommendation. You know, and I had a dialogue with my client, and uh, we were able to pinpoint the um, 
positive test. It's my understanding that she had been um, sick and we reviewed what sort of medicine she was taking. Uh, she was taking Robitussin at the time. I did have an opportunity to review what she took. I did some research and Robitussin does indicate the use of alcohol. Judge, this case, it stemmed from a malicious destruction of the property, if I'm not mistaken, Judge. I mean, the fact that she's even testing, I can't tell you as to the police board if alcohol or drugs were a, uh, a condition. Sure for was. All right, so that would reflect why she's being tested. But Judge, uh, she's done extremely well on probation. I uh, had a dialogue with her and she indicated that she's not, she wasn't drinking alcohol. She was not uh, trying to uh, sidestep her responsibilities to the court. Uh, I did indicate to her that she is absolutely responsible for everything that goes in her system. In this circumstance, Judge, I would respectfully request that she have a geo review hearing. Uh, obviously, I would uh, anticipate testing to be increased, but uh, she does have a unique opportunity to have this not go under criminal history. I'd ask for one final opportunity for her to be in full compliance, to maintain her 771.1 and not go into custody today. Obviously, any future violations, whether uh, based on intent or accidents, that's good anticipate daily. there being uh, strict uh, consequences to those actions. So at this time, Judge, I would be respectfully requesting leniency uh, in this matter. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am, what's happening with your matter out of the 20th District Court for operating under the influence of alcohol? Oh, I, I, am, I have not even called uh, both of those courts that. Why not? I'm trying to take care of this first. Ma'am, I, I specifically ordered staff, I specifically ordered you to clear up your warrants. Like, I have to have those courts to clear up your warrants. I, I'm going to, but I need to get this taken care of too. So I'm trying to do everything, not all at once. You have two warrants for your arrest, ma'am. I can take you into custody right now because I, you're not taking, you're not taking care of what I know, ma'am. I just didn't know what I should do first. I'm, I'm doing everything else that I'm supposed to do. Which is what? I'm, um, I started my substance treatment. I've been, um, every time I call um, to go take a test, I go. I haven't missed nothing. Um, I'm starting my community service next Friday at the Brownstown Animal Shelter. I've reported to my probation. I've been paying my fines and fees. You know, I can't, I don't have enough money to take care of everything all at once. And you don't need money to, to clear up your warrants specifically, right? Okay. You need to cap, you may or may not, you need to contact the courts to find out if you're going to need any money to clear up your warrants. Okay. To set up a court date. Okay. I thought I would have to pay or something, and I just didn't want to get in over my head. But you don't know unless you call. True. Sure. And so you want me to believe that all three of these dates that you use Robitussin. I have not drank an ounce of alcohol since April. And that's the truth. And I don't take any other medications. I, you know, I, I drink Diet Coke. Hmm. Okay, I'm assuming that's a yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I've been sick and it helps me sleep at night with my coffee. Okay. Well, that would. The 15th falls within those two and a half weeks. The 7th is falls outside of that. And July 17th is way outside of that. That's the only thing that I can tell you, Your Honor. I, I have not had nothing else. I don't, I, my diet hasn't changed or nothing. Well, your amounts would suggest Either you're drinking the entire bottle of Robitussin, no. or you're drinking alcohol <clears throat> in some other form. And ma'am, you were also informed that if you, that you could not use any medications that contained alcohol. I did not, I did not know that, or I wouldn't have done it. Honestly, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to get my stuff taken care of, Your Honor. And I, did, I honestly didn't know. I've been sick. I didn't know that I couldn't take cough medicine. Mm. Okay. Because probation tells you, and so does the testing facility. I didn't know I couldn't take cough medicine. 
nobody, nobody told me I couldn't take off medicine. I didn't know I, I couldn't take over-the-counter medicine. So that's the truth. All right. You wouldn't have done it. You didn't receive any sort of uh, paperwork that indicated? I did. I, did I, you read it? I, not all of it, no. Well, ma'am, that's unfortunate because that would have indicated additional, an additional time that you cannot use any medication with alcohol unless there's something from your doctor with a prescription. Okay. I understand now. Yeah, you not reading the paperwork. I read some of it, but not all of it. Well, that is on you. I know. We have three positive that. <clears throat> I do not believe for a moment that you used Robitussin all of those times, nor that you used enough that would register those positive numbers. I've only been taking that at night for two and a half weeks. Okay. Well, what about I don't August 7th? I don't know, ma'am. I don't know your honor. And July 17th. I don't know. And are you still working in the bar? Yes. People buy you shots? No, I'm not, I'm not allowed to drink at work. Uh -huh. Have you been to any parties, any graduation no, parties? I haven't done nothing. I've just been working and I watch my grandkids and I try to take care of my business. So if you're tested today, what's in your system? Nothing. Diet Coke and cough medicine. And so you're still taking it? I had to take some last night. I've been sick, Your Honor. Yeah. Take some that doesn't have alcohol. I did not know this until this morning when I spoke with my lawyer. That's the truth. I did not know. Oh, good Lord. She works at a bar, too. I, I mean, no one was buying it before that, but come on. And Your Honor, answering with respect to consideration for potentially an alcohol tether. A spreadsheet. Grab that from Courtney, please. Okay. I'm sorry, what was that, counsel? There's an alternative to a jail or a sentence this time. We would ask that potentially an alcohol tether be a provision that would be a way to demonstrate to the court that she can be in full compliance. She seemed very sincere and contrite during my interview with her. I'd ask that she have one final opportunity to demonstrate full compliance, Judge. Well, counsel, she's had three. I mean, she's had many options, opportunities, and there's three. We have three positive violations to offer alcohol, and the level on the 15th of August was 573 nanograms per milliliter, and anything over 500 is confirmed is confirmed positive, and. The August 2nd, the ethyl sulfate, which is the um, metabolite, that was 2,900 nanograms per milliliter. And the July 17th was 7,500 nanograms per milliliter. So, ma'am, it absolutely was not robotussin. I, I'm just, I'm not saying that it was, I'm just saying that's the only thing that I put in my body. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get my stuff taken care of here. And I, I don't know, I haven't done anything wrong, anything different. My diet hasn't changed, I don't know. I just been sick and taking cough medicine, that's all. That's all I've been doing. Well, and how much cough medicine are you drinking, ma'am? Just the recommend what it's on the back of the package. I take the little cup full at night before I go to bed, so I don't cough. That does not seem to be the case. I'll do whatever you need me to do. I'll go and pee every day, whatever. I don't know what else to say.
hearing the truth would be a start. I, I, that's, I'm telling you the truth, I promise you. I have not drank since April. That's the truth. I, my diet hasn't changed. I've only been taking one for dozen ever since I've been sick. I have not done nothing else. I work and have my grandkids. That's all I do. Well, oh, ma'am, you are extremely intoxicated at the date of this offense. You have a pending operating while intoxicated matter. And now you have three positive alcohol tests while you've been on probation and you've only been on probation for two months. And your numbers would suggest that it is more than Robitussin. And the number, the numbers are what they are. I don't know what to say, Your Honor. I just, that's all I've done. I don't do nothing else. I mean, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. That's all. I don't do nothing else. <laughs> like I'm 50 years old. I don't want to be dealing with this stuff. I want to work and take care of my grandkids. I have a drink because of them and me. And I tell you, I don't. I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. Okay. All right, counsel, I'm gonna go off the for just one moment. I need to grab some paperwork for a moment. I'm gonna warn you, I don't think I have all of the hearing. Punishing there. Never. We are going back on the record in the matter of. There's no finish line. Fred Austin. Hello, hello, hello. It's what Jordan happened here? You from Chicago, as usual. I don't know. I think it autoplayed one of my own videos. <laughs> I guess that's all I got. Uh, tell me what happened in the chat so I can just announce it. I, I I imagine she gets remanded, right? She gets remanded. You got to put her in the clink. She obviously isn't going to stop. Well, you know, Marion was nice enough to get this for me, but she, you know, maybe didn't get to the last couple minutes. Jail at six. That's what that's what she she suggested to me. So she has to report to she has to report to jail at six o'clock. That's 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 where it's headed. That that's all that happened. That's all that happened. There's two of me. Was there two of me the whole time here? On my screen, it's just one. That's more than enough. <laughs> I got this fresh uh, Oh Sweet Juice. This one's too small, though. I have to tell you, if you order this, this is an extra large. But it's soft and it's good stuff. I'm, I'm just saying it runs small. Runs small. 
It's got it's got a big uh, oh sweet Jesus on the back. It's it's nice, <laughs> just like this, but like but you know big. It's very very cool. All right, thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. That was I, I don't even know that, that was that was the whole situation. <sighs> Natalie Natalie stole the day with uh, with uh, <laughs> we, were, we were fixing to have consensual. <laughs> Oh, it's good stuff. So I think she's I think she's starting a stream. I, I put a redirect over there. Maybe I I know she had other good stuff, so you might want to go over there and check it out. Thanks for coming out. I'll see y'all soon. <laughs>